it's an invitation because it is an invitation from Christ to accept Him. Okay? And you cannot have, you cannot make your walk your own until you have your walk started. And your walk cannot start until you are in Christ. So if you are here today, I want you to listen to these scriptures first as we talk about it. And, and this is where I am going to cite some scripture. We're going to look at just a few scriptures. And we're going to look at Romans in chapter 10, or chapter 8. It says, therefore, oops, more technical problems. Chapter 8, verse 1 says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. And just earlier in 6.23, it says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So you got to be in Christ Jesus in order to have a walk with Christ. In order to have a walk with Christ, you got to be in Christ Jesus. See, it works that way. Can't have it other ways. So I can't talk to you today and have it be meaningful to you, unfortunately, about making your walk all it can be if you're not in Christ to begin with. Okay? So, and how do you get in Christ? Peter tells us the day of Pentecost, he starts preaching, he makes it very simple. The world makes it hard. We make, he made it simple. Okay? Believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You baptize, you give forgiveness of your sins, and you get the gift of the Holy Spirit. You're in Christ. Okay? Romans chapter 6 talks about baptism, tells you when you're buried, you're raised, you're a newness of life, you're in Christ. That's where your walk starts. Okay? That's where it starts. So I'm not going to stand up here and, and, again, that word presumptuous, and presume that any of you are or are not part of Christ. That's not for me to do. Okay? If you're in Christ, I ask you to listen to what I'm going to say in a few minutes and see if you can apply it to your walk. If you're not in Christ, I ask you to think about becoming, getting in Christ. Okay? And if any time throughout this time together today, you decide, you know, I want to do this. I want to be in Christ. Interrupt me. Stop me. Raise your hand. Stand up. You're still going to give me an invitation at the end. But stand up and if you want to do it, do it when, they, when Christ tells you to. If Christ convicts you and says you want to do it, then do it. Stand up. We'll stop this lesson, and we'll get you in Christ. They will continue on the lesson, and then the lesson can have meaning to you Amen. for what I want it to. Okay? So don't worry about interrupting me. Don't worry about stopping me. Don't worry about holding people up from eating later. They can wait. Okay? The food will wait. Okay? And if not, they got phones, and they can text people say they're going to be late. Okay? <laughs> don't hold back. Okay? Because no matter what we say, no matter what Gavin talks about, no matter what you hear or see, the most important part of all of it is that you get yourself into Christ. Okay? And then everything else matters. Okay? So, that's my, that's my offer to you. It's not a challenge. It's not for me to challenge. But if you're ready to do it, just raise your hand and I'll stop. Okay? Now, on to our, uh, the lesson. The rest of the lesson. A couple points. And then I'm going to send you on your way. Okay? Making you walk your own. If I step on your toes, I don't apologize. If I get you excited... I don't take credit, okay? Hopefully, you'll hear the same thing you may have heard from someplace else, but in a different way. I said that earlier, because that's what I'm trying to do. First thing you gotta do, you need to take charge of your own walk. Take charge of your own walk. I have a laundry list of things that I could put under this. I'm a list kind of person when I do my lessons like this. You guys have probably figured this out. I like lists. I like to give you a list of things and how to fix them, okay? Or how to, or how to try to change them. You gotta take charge of your walk. Okay? You cannot continue if you are doing it. You cannot start if you haven't already started relying on other people to tell you what your walk with Christ should be. Okay? They can help you. And they will help you. But you cannot just rely on that alone. Okay? Here's the example that I want to give today. One of them. Okay? You all come to church. I've got some numbers here I'm going to give you. This is pretty eye-opening, at least it was to me when I started looking at it myself. All right, ready for some numbers? There's 168 hours in a week, 24 days times seven days a week, all right? Average person, if you accept that they sleep eight hours a day, some of you might sleep more, some of you might sleep less, okay? But if you average it eight hours a day, that's 56 hours a week that you're sleeping, okay? That's gonna give you 112 hours that you are awake during the week, the average person, okay? 112 hours. Now here's where it comes where you got you get your foot ready to get stepped on, okay? If you are someone that comes to church on Sunday morning and relies on your time here to be the only thing that helps you get your walk going with Christ, 
you're going to spend about two hours, give or take, how long-winded the teachers and speakers are. Okay? You get here at 9.30, you're going to be out of here probably by 12. That's two and a half hours. So you get a little bit more. But if you spend two hours every Sunday coming to church to work on your walk and your personal relationship with Christ, you're going to spend 1.7% of your waking time walking with Christ. Now remember, I'm not talking about your salvation. Okay, we're not talking about that. You're going to be you're saved 100% of that time. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Christ the Savior that you have an opportunity to have. You're going to be spending 1.7% out, 1 of your time with Him. Is that very much? Not much at all, right? All right, so you're going to get a benefit if you come to Sunday class, Sunday school class. Another reason to come to Sunday school, you'll sound better in these numbers, right? Come to morning class, right? Because you're going to get an extra hour, 45 minutes, we'll give you an hour, round it up. Okay? So that's going to give you three hours every Sunday out of 112 hours a week that you're going to be working and, and, and walking and working on your relationship with Christ on your own. That's only 2.6% of your waking time that you are spending working on your relationship with Christ. Is that very much? No. Okay, well, I get a way to make it better for you. Okay? Come to Wednesday night class, or Sunday night class. Sunday night class, you'll be 3.5% of your time. If you make it to Wednesday night too, okay, then you're up to 4.4% of your waking time is working on your relationship with Christ. Now, think of all the things that you do in your life. Okay? What else do you spend 4.4% of your time doing? Looking at Facebook. How many of you look at Facebook 4.4% of your time? Out of 112 hours a week, do you spend more than five hours of time on social media? Okay. And that assumes, okay, you get to use the five hours if you are actually coming to Wednesday night and Sunday night class. If you're just coming to Sunday morning worship service, okay, we're talking about 1.7%. So how many other things in your life do you spend only 1.7% of your time doing? A lot of things, right? That are going to exceed that 1.7%. The point being, when you come to church, if you're using church worship time as your only foundation for your walk with Christ, not salvation, but your walk, you're using less time in your life to work on your relationship with Christ than you probably are doing in anything else that you're doing. Come on now. Okay? How can we expect to have the walk that Christ wants us to have? If we're spending that small amount of time working on our walk. Here's something else. When you come to church, this is not a slam on the church. Okay. By the way, I love keeping things real. Do you guys like to keep things real? And I know, Sandra, you were joking earlier when you, when you said, well, when we talk about peace. Right? But so many times, the answer, everybody said, oh, I got peace. Oh, I got joy. I got happiness. Right? We got to keep life real. Right? We got to keep it real. So I'm going to keep this real with you now, too. You're spending two hours a day on Sunday, not two hours a day, two hours on Sunday, coming to worship service, okay? Working on your walk with Christ, right? Your walk with Christ. What did you have to do with what happens on Sunday morning? Most of you, nothing. Gavin decides the message he's gonna teach to us. The songs are picked for us. You don't know what songs you're singing. You don't get input on the songs you're singing. Most of you don't get up and talk about the communion. Most of us don't get up and say a prayer. So most of us are sitting there, and I'm not chiding you for sitting there. I'm just saying, even if we have our two hours of time on Sunday with our walk, our personal walk with the Lord, that walk is being decided by other people. You get, in those chairs, what this congregation gives you from up front. Okay? You're not in control of that. So you're right there. You're not even putting out effort for your walk with Christ. It's being given to you. Ouch. Huh? Okay? It's not a bad thing. I'm not saying that. We should all be coming to worship service. And we love what we get at worship service. But to make your walk the best it can be, you should be doing something. And I should be doing something besides what everybody decides I get on Sunday mornings. Okay? So we should not be relying on others to establish our walk. Okay? Now, 
outside of church, outside of worship service, okay? There are some other things that go on, right? You may have a need, you may see a need, and you may do nothing about it. What can you do to help with your walk with Christ? You can reach out, okay? Is there anything that prevents us from reaching out and offering the help that we see is needed before we're called? No. Is there anything that prevents us from reaching out and sharing a thought about a need that needs to happen to some of our brothers and sisters before we are asked about it? No. But what do we all, most of us, if you're like me, have a tendency to do? Wait until somebody asks us. Okay? They ask us to be involved in something. They ask us to go do something. Okay? Was that me taking charge of my walk with Christ? No, that was somebody else coming to me and giving me the opportunity. My challenge to us today is we should be looking at ways to take charge of what our walk is. Okay? Make our walk what we want it to be, not what others want it to be. When we rely on others to give us what we think we want, when those others don't give us what we want, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're gonna to try to go someplace else that has it, for one thing, okay? We're gonna be grumpy, we're gonna be grouchy, okay? We're gonna have attitude, okay? I had this before, okay? Not, I'm not necessarily here, I've been, I've been at that point where I wanted something that I wasn't getting. And so instead of trying to make it happen and try to fill that void, I get irritated that others aren't filling that void for me. Okay. Imagine Paul sitting in prison. Paul wrote four, at least four of our, gospel, our epistles while he was in prison. Okay. Was the church, oh, the church giving Paul what he wanted then, do you think? Think anybody that's in prison is getting what they want? I don't think so. But what did Paul do? Paul made it happen, didn't he? Paul did what he needed to do as Paul. And he wrote four books, at least four books for us that became part of the Bible. Imagine if Paul would have said, oh man, this is not working. I'm in prison, I don't like being in prison. Uh, I can't do this. Somebody's, nobody's getting me out of prison. God's not getting me out of prison, he's left me in prison. I'm not gonna do this anymore. Well, we wouldn't have, I think, Colossians, Ephesians, and Philippians. Philemon, I think, are the four maybe that he wrote. We wouldn't have those. He wouldn't have written them. He would have given up. Okay? We can find ourselves doing that too. Or we could be like Paul. When something is not quite our way, we try to change it. We try to fix it in a godly way. In a godly way. Okay? So we can reach out to others to help make this work. Okay? So the first, first step here, I'm going to summarize it like this. In the Old Testament... We, if we were in the Old Testament, wasn't really designed for us to have this one-on-one -on -one relationship with Christ. Christ wasn't even around. Wasn't really designed to have us have this one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. We had the high priest who would intercede for us, right? Periodically, I don't know how many times it was, the priest would go into the temple, raise up the prayers that he thought we needed for, for our walk. And he would raise those up to God. God would accept them, accept the sacrifice, and we'd go on about our way. Well, then came the day when Christ died. Okay? And you can read about this in the apostles. When Christ died, what happened to the curtain in that temple? It was torn, right? It was ripped open. As evidence that we are able to have the one-on-one -on -one relationship with our Savior, with Christ. Okay? That's what he wants from us. So he's given that to us. In his sacrifice, he not only gave you and I salvation, okay? not only got us reconciled to the Father, but he wants a one-on-one -on -one relationship with us. He wants us to look to him and to ask him and to talk with him and to work with him and to play with him and do all these things with him in our lives. He doesn't want us to have somebody else doing it for us. Okay? So do we want to live with the full benefit, the full love of the New Testament 
under Christ, where he wants a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Do you, do you see what that's like? Christ wants to be your friend. He is our Savior. He is our God. He is to be revered. But he wants a relationship with you. He, he will take a relationship with you through whatever everybody else is doing. We're still his children. But he's looking for so much more. We should take advantage of that, shouldn't we? Amen. Okay. We should take advantage of that. How many of you love sports? Okay. You're going to go to your... And if you don't love sports, how many of you have grandchildren, children, some somebody that you would love to see some big event that they're going to be participating in? Okay? Should it be all your hands should be up if I ask you to raise your hands, all right? So think of it like this. This big event, you have a chance to go to. Okay? You have tickets to go to this big event. Or you can send Kai... And I'll text you what's going on. Okay? I'll send you a little twe tweets about what's happening. Okay? Or maybe you can watch your little like, World Cup lovers. Okay? You want to watch World Cup on TV? You're going to watch a little blurbs on your blog on your phone. Okay? You want to be part of it, right? You're going to go to that sporting event. You're going to go to that musical, whatever it is, that play, that whatever it is. You want to be there. You don't want this third-hand tweet about it. Why will we... Accept the tweets about our Christian world. I just ask you to look and think about that. Okay. Again, if you're not doing it and you're you're happy with your walk, that's fine. But hopefully you can take bits and pieces and make it even better. Okay. So we want to take charge of our walk. Second point. To help us with making our walk your own. You should challenge the Bible. Ask questions. Anybody ever ask questions about the Bible? Hopefully everybody says, yes, I do, okay? Did I say question your faith? I didn't say question your faith, okay? But there's nothing wrong with, and I'll stick my head out, nothing wrong with asking questions about the Bible. We've got to be able to ask the big questions, the deep questions, not be afraid of the Bible, okay? Not be afraid of even offending our revered God, okay? You know why? And I mean this in the most most highest degree of respect I could for our God, he is thick-skinned. Okay? You are not going to upset him. You're not going to get him to abandon you because you ask some questions about the Bible. How many of you have gone along in life on any point in the in Scripture, gone along with the thought that you've been told at some point, you started reading the Bible one day, and all of a sudden you're looking at this, man, what was that that Kai said? That is not what I'm reading right now. I'd like to see a show of hands. Anybody had an experience like that? Look at that. Okay? That's why we should be on our own, studying the Bible, asking questions. Nothing wrong with listening to a preacher. Nothing wrong with watching video. Nothing wrong with reading books. Nothing wrong with reading your footnotes in the Bible, bottom of your life application Bible. Okay? But those are somebody else's answers to the questions. How can you get the answer that you need to get on your own by asking God. Okay? You get into the Word. Yes, you pray about it. You ask God for answers. It may not come right away. It may need you to study some more. You may just have to read it, read it, read it, read it. You may have to read it again and then read it again. Go look at some apologetics with your books are written on it. Okay? Talk to Bruce. Talk to somebody about it. Go back and read it again. Okay? He'll give you the answer. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message comes from the Word of God. Okay? He's going to give us the answer. Now, if He did not expect us, if God did not expect us to test the Bible, to ask the questions, the deep questions about the Bible, why do we have the Bible in the form that it's in? Why do we have four Gospels to talk about similar things in different ways written by different people who had different backgrounds and different ways of writing. He would have just given us a list. Wouldn't that have been easy? Here's your list of things that you that you, you got to do. Okay? Don't question them. Just don't do them. Well, who had that list? The Old Testament people, right? They had the Ten Commandments. And then they had all the rules of Leviticus. They left them really up, no questions. Pretty much everything answered in there. I don't know if everything's answered in there. There was a lot of stuff in there. Okay? 
Christ summed that all up into love. Okay? But still, we have the Bible written in a way that he wants us to ask questions. Explain these in parables. Right? Jesus could have just answered point blank. Boom. Told us exactly how it is. Okay? But why did he do that? Because he wants us. He wants you and everybody else okay, to build your own walk with him. To get your own understanding of him through his word. Okay? I, I truly believe God does not want Kai to have an understanding of, of him that come from bread. Okay? Or even from my wife. Or from anybody else. He wants that to be part of my walk. But he wants me to seek him and find those answers. And you can't do that if you don't ask questions. So we can't be afraid to ask questions about the Bible. Okay? He is thick skinned. He doesn't want our teachers to be uh, the only source of our knowledge of him. He doesn't want the preachers to be the only source of knowledge from him. He wants us to study. Okay? And for a couple thousand years now, okay, for a couple thousand years, the world has been trying to find fault in the Bible. Okay? He's not worried about you finding fault in the Bible. Challenge it, question it, ask questions, pray about it, and then follow what he tells you and help that build your walk. Okay? That will help. Last thing. This is an easy one, but can be tricky sometimes. We need to learn to express ourselves in our walk. Okay? All kinds of ways that we can do that. We gotta express ourselves. I kind of boiled this down to this. There are people out there that love to raise their hands when they sing. Okay? When they pray, raise your hands. If you're one of those people, it's not for me to say for you to do it. Absolutely, but I challenge you, do it. Express yourself. Raise your hands. If you're someone that wants to clap, clap when you sing. Okay? If you're someone who wants to smile and laugh and have that joy we were talking about when you come to worship service, then have it. Show it. Okay? Amen. When you are good and ready to go to church and your friends or your even some of your family ask you to do other things, you can I say this all the time. You don't have to go to church, right? You get to go to church, and you're going to tell them, I get to go to church, and you're going to smile about it, and you're going to show them what it means, okay? And by expressing yourself in those ways, you're not going to only be expressing it to them. Who else are you expressing it to? Yourself, okay? You are being bold enough to show your walk and not hide your walk. There are a lot of people that have to hide things about themselves, and if you talk to people who are able to then share things about themselves, they will tell you probably it's a big relief. We as Christians can do the same thing. Okay? In Matthew, it talks about how you, you're under a your light, should be shining. Okay? That's what he's talking about right there. We should be letting ourselves flow. You want to wear shirts that talk about Christ? Wear shirts that talk about Christ. You want to wear a cross? People, I, people have told me before, can't wear a cross. It's, just, it's a symbol. It's, a, it's an idol. I say no. Wear. Express yourself. You love Christ. Okay? Let yourself flow. Now, there are limits to what we can do. Remember when I started this, I said, we're not talking about expressing ourselves beyond what the scripture allows us to express ourselves. So there are limitations to what we can do. Don't cross those limitations. But the, the freedom that we have in Christ which he talks about in, this, in the scriptures. Use it. Let yourself go. Let yourself be who all you can be for Christ. In your walk. Okay? So to make your walk your own, you get to take charge. That's the biggest one. Take charge of yourself. You take charge of yourself at work. Take charge of yourself in your family. Well, take charge of yourself in your Christian walk as well. Make things happen. Okay? You're going to study. You're going to challenge. You're going to question, you're going to pray, you're going to get the understanding that you need, and then you're going to express yourself. Okay? To me, I could have gone on and on and on and on about these different ways to make your walk your own. These are the three that, for me, helped me realize, quit being grouchy. Amen. I'm not saying you're grouchy. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. See, that's what we should be doing. 
You want to say amen, say amen. You want to say praise God, praise God. You want to say Kai, no way. <laughs> say it. It's okay. Express yourself. We do not have to sit here and just be quiet while the preacher talks. And if you get excited about it, show it. Okay? You don't agree? Show me. Gavin might not want you to, but I show me. You have to ask Gavin, okay? That's it, okay? That's what our walk is about. Okay? So again, I'm going to close here, almost. I'm going to say, if you're happy with where your walk is, that's fine. My Brenda told me, man, I, I never share my lesson with her. She doesn't have any idea what I'm talking about, except I walk around the house talking to myself. So she probably has a little bit of an idea. But until you know the bell goes off, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to say either. So I can't tell her what I'm going to say. But she did say from some of the stuff I said, she says, oh, it just sounds like it's going to be so negative. I said, I said, well, it's not going to be. Okay? There's nothing wrong with getting slapped by the Bible. Okay? Sometimes we need to be hit over the head with the Bible. Sometimes a preacher needs to step on our toes, needs to pierce our heart, needs to hit us hard with the word. That was not my intent today. Okay? My intent today was really to encourage you. Okay? I could have turned it all around and made it a slap in the face. But that wouldn't be fair because I'm just offering you thoughts on how to make your walk all to be. It's not for me to say what your walk is or isn't. Okay? You know what your walk is. Okay? You're happy where it's at. You're happy with just the, the limitations that you have placed on it. That's a little slap right there. Okay? A little slap there. The limitations you have placed on it, then fine. You're going to go have some lunch. You go out. You probably shake my hand and say, hey, nice lesson. And you go on about your business. That's fine, too. I don't care about any of that. What I hope is that you guys will go and say, you know, at least one thing he said made sense. And I can, I can get a little bit closer here to Christ in my walk. And that's what it's all about. And if we could just keep doing that, okay, on our own, okay, you will be in charge of your walk with Christ. And that's what it's about. So, in closing, invitation. I don't challenge you. I don't threaten you with the word. The word does it itself. Okay? I say it again like I started. Started at one point, I'm going to end the same point. You cannot have a walk with Christ without being in Christ. I wish you could. Okay? Those aren't, that's not me saying that. This is the Bible saying it. Okay? If you are not in Christ and you want to be in Christ, if you want to share in all the spiritual blessings that it talks about in Ephesians chapter 1, just read it. Okay? All spiritual blessings are in Christ. That's where we get it. We get our salvation, okay, through communion. Okay, we, we, we hear about communion every Sunday. Do we really know what communion is beyond what we hear up here? Okay, communion, we're celebrating the death of our Savior and the resurrection of our Savior and the blood and the body that was given up for you so that you could have salvation. Salvation being eternal life with Christ Jesus and God himself, okay? If you want that, okay, that's all you need to know. You don't have to know everything else, okay? All you need to know and believe through faith is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that you have sinned, and that you need help getting back to God, and you need, blood, you need the blood of Christ and the body of Christ, that sacrifice, once and for all, to get you reconciled to God. Okay? And if you believe that, everything else can come after that. You can start studying, and you can start your walk. So if you're ready to start your walk, and you're not already on that walk, then we do have the baptismal up here. You don't have to do it here. To do it someplace. Go get yourself in Christ. Don't wait. Don't wait. Okay? If you're already in Christ and you're feeling down, you've got some issues in your life, you've got some things that you want to be, have prayers about, you don't have to come forward, but you can come forward. I promise you, if you do come forward, we'll have people around you that are going to pray with you and, and, and try to comfort you and try to talk you through it, helping you with your walk. Okay? Because you made the bold move to come forward. Okay? It's hard to do that, but do it. It's hard sometimes to accept Christ's sacrifice and to say, I need help. I'm a failure. I'm sinful. I need God. Humble yourself. We sing that song today. We sing, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. All right, there you go. we got to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. The first time we do that is when we get baptized. We recognize that He is the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except Him. Thank you.